Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain deck featuring Surin of House Markov, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, and we're also combining it with Lurus of the Dream Den as our companion. So first let's take a look at Surin, a 2-mana 1-4 with lifelink and extort. So for those that haven't been around for a while, whenever we cast a spell, if we control a card with extort, we can pay either a black or white mana. If we do, each opponent loses one life and we gain that much life. And then at the beginning of our post-combat main phase, if we gained three or more life this turn, we get to transform Sorin into the Ravenous Neonate, a three loyalty planeswalker with extort, so we can once again pay the extra mana when we cast our spells to drain the opponent. And then immediately we get to plus two to make a food token, or we could minus one and then deal damage equal to the amount of life we gained this turn to any target, which at the very least will be three since we just transformed Sorin. And then the minus six, which is quite achievable, just plus two twice and then immediately minus six. We can gain control of target creature, becomes a vampire, and we can also put a lifelink counter on it if we control another white permanent, which is also very likely. So Sorin is pretty easy to transform in this deck, and all the various abilities from the Planeswalker provide a lot of utility, as the minus one can also be used to close out the game, since it can also target the opponent, so maybe store up some of the food tokens and then sacrifice all of them in the same turn if we don't have anything else going on, and now all of a sudden the minus one could deal nine damage pretty easily to help close out the game. And then we can also maybe keep some food tokens around, so that if the opponent did answer Sorin, we now have a way to easily gain three life to transform it back into the Planeswalker after redeploying the creature. So there's a ton of synergy throughout here. And then by playing Lurus as companion, we can only have permanent cards in our starting deck with mana value 2 or less, but conveniently our commander has mana value 2. Then we get a 3-2 lifelink in the companion zone, so we do have to pay 3 mana to get it in our hand. But then afterwards, once during each of our turns, we may cast a permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard. So if we get Lurus in play and the opponent answered Sorin, we can also replay Sorin out of the graveyard, and then it's usually not too difficult to transform it back into the Planeswalker, so this gives us a lot more recursion and a cheaper way to redeploy Sorin other than having to redeploy it from the command zone. And then Alurus has a ton of great synergies throughout the deck as well. We also get a lifelink creature which synergizes with Sorin. So there's a lot to like about this type of deck as opposed to including more expensive permanents when most of the life gain payoffs and enablers tend to be 1 and 2 mana anyways. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, I've split it up into a few different categories. The main one, of course, are going to be the life gain enablers and payoffs, which I've grouped together. Then we've got a pretty long list of removal spells to interact with the opponent's game plan. And then we also have some discard effects to maybe take away removal spells, especially protecting Lurus is important, because if we protect Lurus, then we can pretty easily get everything else back from the graveyard. And then finally, our miscellaneous section, which includes some fun cards that can also synergize with our author life gain enablers and payoffs, or cards that work well with Lurus, like Mishra's Bobble, for instance, which we can get back from the graveyard for free each turn to draw an extra card. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with our life gain cards. At one mana we've got a Jani's Welcome, gaining a life whenever a creature enters under our control, and we've got a ton of similar effects throughout, including the upgraded version Case of the Uneaten Feast, which we can also solve to eventually maybe sacrifice to get creatures back from our graveyard. Cleric class will enhance our life gain, can also level it up to give us additional plus one counters whenever we gain life, which can also get out of hand pretty quickly. And then at level three, we can get back a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield, so that can be a way to get back Lurus, assuming it didn't get exiled, so we've got even more recursion built in. Then the Guide of Souls, a perfect new addition here, not only gaining life, but also gaining energy, which we can spend to upgrade one of our creatures. Got Healer's Hawk as an evasive lifelinking creature, and then and now the upgraded version, the Ruin Lurker Bat, which occasionally lets us scry one, plays well with our fetch lands as well. And then a Volt Scourge will cost us two life if we want to cast it for one mana as a 1 1 flying lifelink. And then uh, moving on, we've got the Leon in Vanguard, passively gaining life, attacking as a 2 2. Light of Hope can gain 4 life at instant speed, so that can be an easy way to transform Sorin, maybe play it on turn 3 alongside Light of Hope, and immediately get a Planeswalker that can start activating, and occasionally we can also blow up an enchantment or maybe get a plus 1 counter somewhere. Lunark Veteran, another way to passively gain life when creatures enter, can also disturb it. We've got the Ocelot Pride, an exciting new addition that can help make cat tokens, and then if we have the City's Blessing we can start copying some of our tokens as well. 
And then we've got Sarah Ascendant, which is always powerful in a format where you start with 25 life. So this can be a one mana 6-6 six, six, flying a lifelink if we gained a little bit of life to start out. Soul Warden, the best life gain enabler, as it also triggers off opposing creatures entering. And then Speaker of the Heavens, another payoff for gaining some life early, as we can now maybe activate it to make a 4-4 Angel token, assuming we have 32 or more life in Brawl. And then the Reckoner Raid can drain the opponent for the first two chapters and then transforms into a 2-2 Menace. So also makes it easier to transform Soren the turn after we played Reckoner Raid. And then we've got a 1-1 Death Touch Lifelink with a Vampire of the Dire Moon. And then moving on to 2 mana, we've got Agile's Pride Mate, getting a plus one plus one counter whenever we gain life. So that can also grow very quickly, similar to Voice of the Blessed, which also picks up additional abilities along the way. And then Amalia doesn't get a plus one counter, but gets to explore each time, which can either turn into a plus one counter or maybe drawing an extra land in the process. Then we've got the Archivist, punishing the opponent for playing fetch lands as we now gain life and draw card. The Orator, another way to gain life when creatures enter. Adversary, a 3-1 lifelink, can also sink additional mana into it to pump up our team. Then a Potion of Healing and Revitalize are pretty similar, can help us gain 3 while drawing a card, so also makes it easy to transform Sorin. Sanctify can destroy an artifact or enchantments, and we gain 3 life, so that can be a perfect way to transform Sorin while slowing down the opponent. And then with Birth we get multiple abilities, getting a Plains, making a Wall, and eventually gaining 2 life. So also makes it easier to transform Soren in a future turn. A Daxos triggers when creatures enter on our side or die, gaining life in the process. A Blood Artist not only gains life, but also makes the opponent lose a life whenever any creature dies, so plays well with all our removal spells. Then we've got another Flying Lifelink creature that can also disrupt the opponent's hand. And finally the Sadistic Pilgrim triggers when creatures enter and can also drain the opponent when our creatures die. So lots of variations on the same effect. Then our removal includes Path to Exile, not the best answer to opposing commanders since we can help pay for the commander tax by giving the opponent an extra land, but can be a cheap answer to other problematic cards. Source to Plowshares is typically the better removal spell. Then we also have Cut Down and Fatal Push, can easily enable Revolt with our food tokens or fetch lanes. The Nightmare's Thirst can gain life and then shrink down a creature equal to the amount of life we gained. Then a Get Lost is a very flexible answer at instant speed. The Rider we can sacrifice to take out an artifact or enchantment, and especially synergistic with Lurus as we can keep getting it back from the graveyard. Bitter Triumph for creatures and planeswalkers, don't mind paying 3 life to it. And then go for the Throat and Heartless Act, more spot removal for creatures with some small conditions. Shieldress Edict can also make the opponent sacrifice a planeswalker. And then a March of Wretched Sorrow has more life gain synergy. Then moving on to our protection category, we have Giver of Runes to grant literal protection. Selfless Savior can sacrifice to make indestructible, especially nice with Lurus. And then we've got some targeted discard effects with Duress, Inquisition and Thoughtseize. And ways to recur creatures from our graveyard with Unearth can cheaply get back Sorin or Lurus. Agadim's Awakening can be a land or a way to get back multiple creatures from our graveyard. And then Reanimate can target both our graveyard as well as the opponent's, so it can also play well with our removal spells. And then finally the Miscellaneous section has Mishra's Bauble to synergize with Lurus to draw an extra card each turn. We've got Mox Amber to give us a small mana boost initially. Curse of Silence to slow down the opponent's commander. Asper Sentinel is always powerful, punishing the opponent for casting non-creature spells. And Dark Ritual can give us a more explosive start or can help pay for the Loris Companion tax. We've got a Bitter Blossom, making a 1-1 flyer each turn at the cost of one life. And then with all the life gain triggers, we can easily pay for it. And then a Call of the Ring can be a way to convert life into a bit of extra card advantage. Lotho can be a way to make additional treasure tokens to help us double spell. Then Arcane Signets, usually worth running, can also make it a little bit easier to start double spelling a turn sooner. And then Lingering Souls is also kind of a pet card of mine, making multiple spirit tokens and we can flash it back. So it plays well with all the creatures that maybe gain life when the creatures enter. And then our mana base is mostly dual lands for mana fixing, also playing all the black and white fetch lands, which can either get a basic godless shrine or the shadowy backstreet to surveil one, can also maybe help fill the graveyard for Lurus. And then we've got a few channel lands here for added interaction, as well as the black castle to draw. And then Phyrexian Tower can sacrifice creatures to give us an extra mana, can also play well with Lurus. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Son of Yoggmoth. We've got a reasonable hand. 
Welcome turn one, turn two, have a few options. Opponent with an Inquisition, which could go after the Bat. Revitalize also a nice way to transform Soren quickly. Takes go for the throats to protect their commander. We'll just play the Ajani's Welcome. And then I'm not opposed to just Soren on two. And then maybe Revitalize on three. Could also check out their hand first with Deep Cavern Bats. And then turn three could always put Lurus in hand. Turn four Soren immediately transform with Revitalize. So we don't expose it to removal. Yeah, maybe that's the safer approach if we want to guarantee a transformed Soren. And we do see Reanimate, that's powerful. Armor of Shadows can make indestructible. And they can cast it basically for free once they get their commander down. And then the Corrupted Bishop. So maybe we actually take the armor. Next turn our opponent can play the Bishop. Turn four they could play their commander, but at least I can take it out and then reanimate will cost them a lot more life than just having to cast armor. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So they currently don't have an answer to Sorin, so I could already play it next turn. And now with the Guide of Souls we can actually transform Sorin right away. So we want to play Guide first. Then Sorin. So we've already gained three, plus we can attack to gain one more. And then what to take out here? Could also just plus. Maybe taking out Vran makes more sense. Because I don't want them to make another token by reanimating the bishop. This is not a human. Yeah, sure. And then I could jump with Guide of Souls to protect Soren. And then Lurs can get the guide back at some point. I think that's going to be easier than having to hassle with replaying Soren which is going to be more expensive. Now they could actually reanimate my Guide of Souls as well. But yeah, I expect them to just play their commander. They don't know about Get Lost. And our opponent actually reanimating our Guide of Souls. Okay, so... We've got a few ways we can go about it. Just casting Revitalize here would let me minus on Son of Yawgmoth to take it out. And then I could still keep up Get Lost. That's maybe a fine starting point. So Revitalize. And then I'm not gonna extort. That works. And then I'm probably going to lose Soren here, no matter what. But I'll keep up Get Lost. Opponent's actually at 13, so they can maybe look into transforming the Bishop. Although they need 6 mana, so they're a little short. And they're sending an additional creature at Soren, so we can't quite save it here. Alright, um, I think we let damage happen. I'm at 32, I've got some life to spare. And then, if they don't present a scarier creature or enchantment, I'll probably get lost the bishop. And then I'll still send Sword into the command zone, even though Lurus could eventually get it back. That's still gonna take a while. So yeah, the bishop could have transformed. Probably fine to get a Godless Shrine, so we can maybe activate Castle as well. That works. 
and Thirst could also come in handy. Maybe go for Lurus, play Giver of Runes, and then Giver can protect Lurus once we deploy it. Could also use Thirst to take out a Guide of Souls, but it's not really a concern right now. Right, opponent found their own castle, and now a Null Priest with Kicker can reanimate a creature. Opponent's back to 13, so yeah, the bishop could once again threaten to transform. And the uh, Guide of Souls is also going off. Alright, so we have some problems to deal with now. Ideally, I just draw a land so I can play Sorin and Thirst and also transform Sorin so we can take out two creatures. And there we go. So let's see here. Play Sorin, gain off a Janice Welcome. Attack, that's two life gained. Thirst is three life gained. Uh, I guess this now has four toughness, so we can't quite take that out. See, I'm gonna be one short, unless I want to um, just use both effects on the Guide of Souls. So yeah, we'll play Sorin. And then... I guess I'll have to attack with a Deep Cavern Bat. And then if I still want to transform Sorin, I would cast a Thirst now, before we go to our second main. Could also keep Sorin as a creature so we don't expose it to the Guide of Souls attacking it. And then I can still second main Thirst the Bishop, so it doesn't transform. So it's kind of an interesting choice here. But I will take out the Bishop. And then next turn we can maybe extort with Sorin. If we can get to four life gains, I can take out the Guide of Souls. Now I won't be able to block the Null Priest all that profitably. Because Giver of Ruins cannot give itself protection. Otherwise I could just protect the creature they put first. But uh, opponent not happy with the Opportunist. And explores again. Now a Font of Agonies can be quite good with their commander. So decides to keep that one. And plays Aetherborn as well. Alright, so lots of life gain creatures here as well. Shouldred's Edicts can uh, be fired off if we want to. Yeah, I guess they can choose which creature to sacrifice. I'll extort. Sentinel extort. So we've gained three life, Sorin will transform. So maybe now is my opportunity to take out the Guide of Souls by giving this protection from white, can attack past the Guide of Souls. So we'll actually have gained four life. And we know what our opponent's top decking, so they won't be able to actually take something out with the Font of Agonies right away. This does specify paying a life. The uh, castle just loses life, so it's not quite the same. But it does synergize with the Phyrexian mana. But they'll still have to wait a turn before they can deploy the Son of Yogmoth. So they can finish off Sorin. Lure us get back Sorin. Put us down to 10. Back up to 14. And we'll decline to put it back in the command zone. Could have been risky if they had a discard spell for Lurus, but I'll uh, now go for Lurus. Get back Sorin. Can also get back Guide of Souls, but I think I would rather get my Planeswalker going again. 
Gain a life, attack with a bat. And then Soren can take out an old priest. While Giver of Runes can protect Lurus. Okay, so I like where this is going. Bono keeps drawing with Castle. And concedes, yeah. Soren can also at some point start going face with the ability if we gain enough life. Can also take out the opponent pretty quickly. On to the next one. Are you attending MagicCon Amsterdam this weekend? Then make sure to come say hi during the Creator Meet and Greet on Saturday and you'll walk away with one of my tokens while supplies last. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a mono green ramp deck with Nissa. And yeah, keeping Nissa off the board is pretty vital since this card can get out of hand very quickly. I'll try it. This is not our best hand since we don't have any actual removal, but Curse of Silence can at least delay Nissa. And now Heartless Act, not a bad draw. So I don't need to play the curse right now if I don't want to. Could start with maybe a Soul Warden. Even though going case into Soul Warden immediately gains me more life. But next turn I might have to remove a creature or play the curse. Gallag Reaters. Alright, so we can curse and play Reckoner Raid. Anissa Resurgent Animist. And I don't think I want to trade, although maybe I do. Sure. Opponent takes it. And a fetch land. And now a visionary, so they've got some more elf synergies. So Heartless Act probably wants to go after the visionary. Or we can wait for them to play Nissa and then take it out. As per Sentinel, probably not at its best in this matchup. So let's see, if I play Sorin, I'll basically have gained two life. One from Reckoner Raid, one from Soul Warden. So yeah, we don't quite have the case in play as well to immediately transform, which would be ideal. And my backstreet enters tapped. So let's start here, see what's up. I wouldn't mind more lanes. Voice of the Blessed, also pretty good with all these other life gain effects. Let's say I keep Voice on top, then if I play Sorin now it doesn't transform. Next turn I can go Voice into Sentinel, or I guess Case into Voice. So maybe I just need to find a land here. And then I guess with Daxos we can immediately transform Sorin, as I'll have another way to gain life. Can go case into Sorin. And then Sorin could be a nice answer to all these elves. And putting voice in the graveyard still helpful once we deploy Lurus as something we can get back. So yeah, don't mind our position with Sorin threatening to transform and Heartless Act. Potentially an answer. Although now a Reclamation Sage can blow up the curse. So next turn they can play Nissa with an uncracked fetch land, enable landfall twice. So I might have to keep up Heartless Act as an instant speed response to our opponent fetching. And then I guess the road captain entering here also gains us more life. So you have plenty of ways to transform Soren. Can start out by taking out the visionary. And then still have Heartless Act to respond to the fetch land. And then I don't think we need to attack with anyone. Okay. Should be pretty easy to also solve the case once we get it down. And that's another way to access our graveyard. 
So there's Nyssa. So as soon as they sack the Fabled Passage, I can sack my Bloodstained Mire. All right. So we can deny the second landfall trigger. Swarm should be fine. All right, so our opponent doesn't get a free elf. One less mana as well. Should buy some time. And a tribute is next. Okay. Adversary can start pumping the team. Go on the B town plan here. If I go just case, sentinel, and adversary, we gain quite a bit of life. Let's see. I guess two, three. Yeah, it would be enough to solve the case as well. And then just not pump the team with adversary. Yeah, could still be reasonable. So no extorting here. Although there was also an option. Just extort each time and keep adversary in hand for next turn. But this still puts a lot of pressure in play. Can take out the Gallag Reaters. Could also maybe go face actually. So yeah, we can attack first. Opponent can block if they want to. The case is solved. So now I could minus to deal 7 damage to my opponent. That feels kind of worth it, as opposed to taking out the greeters, which I guess could then also gain them 2 life. Yeah, I'll still go face. Getting them low also makes the extort ability that much more powerful. And yeah, her opponent scoops it up. We've got a pretty nice graveyard ready to go. And then between the extort and the minus one, we should be able to close it out here. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Tatiova, so blue-green landfall. Not of the Hinadu variety, at least. This hand is not at its best. Path to Exile can be pretty awkward against a landfall deck. But we have other answers, and then I guess case into Amalia is still kind of nice. So yeah, maybe this is good enough. With Amalia finding more lands and hopefully life gain synergies. And I think I prefer Amalia first over Sorin, even though I could extort when playing Amalia next turn if I play Sorin right now. Um, which then I guess I would gain 2 life plus an attack with a life linker, so I could already transform Sorin actually. Alright, never mind. Play this first. Alutho is uh, going to be better once we can cast another spell alongside it. Putin might have a counter spell for Amalia too here. But we can still extort at least. And yep, yeah, classic counter spell. So I won't get to transform Sorin now. We can try again next turn. Alright, so Lotho into Giver of Runes. Not gonna extort. And then by getting the treasure first, now I could extort. On the off chance that they have a counter spell for Giver of Runes. Or a bounce spell for Sorin. Alright, so back to hand we go. And then I'm not gonna pay the extort now, since I want the extra mana to make it easier to redeploy. Sorin. Is there a point with some early interaction here? Next turn we can maybe see Tatiova. 
and a conduit a way to replay lands from the graveyard so it's good with fetch lands or with field of ruin the grove can also draw them a card all right thoughtseize can now have a look so play sorin cast thoughtseize and then I'll extort, I think, since we'll get a replacement treasure. And see Bonnie alongside Ashaya. So yeah, two very powerful cards. I think I still prefer taking Bonnie, since it leaves more stuff behind. And then could play it safe and keep up Giver of Runes, but it doesn't seem like they really have any interaction here, so... Alright, so couldn't quite transform Sorin this turn, maybe next turn, and then working up towards the minus six could be nice. Ashaya makes an appearance. Could path it right now. Probably fine to just edict in my turn. And then pay the extort. Or we could put Lurus in hand, which can later get back Amalia. Yeah, close call. I'm probably going to have to spend next turn answering Tatiova, however. So I don't think I have time to deploy Lurus first. And then, sure, we'll send in the Giver now. The damage could matter. Bono not going for Tatiova, it seems. Getting back Bonnie instead. And casting it. Okay. So I could path one of them right now. And then uh, by exiling Bonnie, they wouldn't be able to get it back with Conduit. Even though ramping them is not ideal. Could have also waited until my turn to path, and then I could extort, get lost a token, extort, and then we would have been able to transform Sorin, but we're also pretty likely to draw another creature here to trigger the case. So I can extort and then still get lost. And by getting the treasure first, I can also extort. Attack, transform Sorin, and just go face with the ability, and that should just be game since we've gained four. Alright, so close one here against the blue green, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Atraxa, so this is going to be a tough matchup. Hopefully, Sanctify finds a target, so that's an easy way to transform Sorin. Don't have much interaction otherwise. So this one might be a little lackluster, but I'll give it a shot. Soul Warden can be powerful. Might have to get a Godless Shrine if I want to go Reconorate plus Vampire on turn 2. I may not want to expose Sorin to removal until we're ready to transform it. Alright, now a Duress, the draw. Could start there. See if the coast is clear. Alright, so it's a Super Friends deck with lots of Planeswalkers. And then some quality removal here. Go for the Throat and Swords to Plowshares. Probably just take the uh, cheaper answer. And... Shielder's Edict could be nice to keep up to answer Kaito, as opposed to playing something into their removal spell. And then before Kaito phases out, we can uh, take care of it. Still going to be difficult to find a window to transform Sorin if our opponent keeps up go for the throat. Alright, so 
and Janice welcome. Reckon a raid. Plus maybe a vampire. And then Soul Warden's a bit more valuable, so we'll save that one in case they decide to go for the throat here. But they probably just keep it up at instant speed. If they do tap out for Atraxa, then next turn going Soul Warden into Sorin would gain enough life to transform it. So then Sorin can take out Atraxa. Alright, so that could work out. So I do have to play Sorin now. So they could just trade for my vampire. Pretty happy with this exchange. And then Sorin transforms. We've gained at least four life. So we get to take out Atraxa. But yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, up against an artifact deck with Brea. This could be a tough matchup just because their commander here leaves two Thopters behind, so even if we take it out with Sorin, the uh, Thopters can still pressure our Planeswalker. And uh, now Curse of Silence can delay their commander. Amalia's not bad, we're just missing more ways to gain life basically. But uh, yeah, I guess Curse of Silence is probably our better answer to Brea to at least delay that for a little bit. Turn to Iconoclast. A way to go wide and a bobble to immediately trigger it. Nice. Could play Sorin, hope it doesn't get removed. And now Light of Hope is a way to immediately transform Sorin. So do we have a change of planes? I can go for Amalia, and then next turn Sorin plus Light of Hope immediately transform, grow Amalia in the process. And then we might have a blocker for Iconoclast as well. Sure. Although it's possible that they don't have a ton of removal for a 1-4 specifically. Chromatic Star into Chromatic Sphere. Alright, so they're getting the most out of their Iconoclast. Plenty of artifacts. I'll keep Amalia around. And we draw another fetch land. So time for Sorin. And find another land. Alright, so we're gonna hang back. And then I could minus take out Iconoclast. What am I? Then our opponent can finish off Sorin by attacking all out next turn, but at least they do lose one of their tokens as well. And given all my mana, we don't have much else going on, so I may as well just replay Sorin. That path at least gives me an extra land. So then it's going to be easier to deploy Lurus to get back Sorin. They might want to start sacking some of these to hit their land drop for the turn. Sadly, Amalia did get exiled, so can't get that back. So I don't think we send Sorin back to the command zone because we have Lurus. Although if they counter Lurus, I'm going to be real sad. And that's always a risk. I'll send it back to the command zone for now, but next time they answer it, I think we leave it in the graveyard. Opponent cycles. And finds a land. They're still pretty far from casting their commander. Sword of the Meek has good synergy with Brea and sacrifice effects, so I think it's going to be Signet 
play a land. Can fetch for a basic. Replay Sorin. And then next turn we can get Lurus. And maybe deploy it already. And then a 1 4 lines up pretty well against all these 1 1 tokens. Could also wait to play Lurus until we can immediately get something back from the graveyard, because right now I would only have one mana left. But again, our graveyard's also pretty empty. We do have some utility lanes with the clearing, drawing a card, fortress, a creature lane, can help transform Sorin. And then I can also fetch my surveil lane to maybe put something in graveyard for Lurus. Now a Foundry Inspector, discounting artifact spells, and a Sanctify, that was huge. So, a Lurus in hand, Sanctify with Extort, take out the Inspector. Can even attack. And we'll just start plussing. And then next turn we have Lurus to get in the way. Now Sword of the Meek is only plus one power, so it's not quite enough to finish off Sorin. They are looking at the graveyard because of uh, Trash for Treasure getting back the Foundry Inspector. Unearth a way to get back Lurus if it does get answered, that's good insurance. And then for now... If I sack my food token, I can still take out the Inspector. And I can extort as well. No. And then I think I play the Silent Clearing to draw, or I could again surveil with one of my fetch lanes. So it's kind of a close call. I probably have enough mana going as is, but I could see the advantage of waiting on sacrificing my land, just giving me a tad more mana for next turn, in case we want to activate the fortress and get something back with Lurus. That could add up. All right, bombardment, a way of finishing off Lurus as well, but now with the Unearth, that's fine. Or they can just go for Sorin or both. So I'm not going to send it back to the command zone, and that kind of incentivizes the opponent to take out Lurus. Now if they can exile Lurus instead, then we're in trouble. Or if they have a counter spell. So I guess for 6 mana, it's still reasonable to just cast Sorin. But then our opponent doesn't have a strong incentive to take out Lurus. So I'm going to say decline. And hopefully we don't get punished. So now Mana Drain and Counter Spell are kind of the types of cards we don't want to see. And then we'll fetch. Get a Backstreet. And the Janice Welcome doesn't do much for me. Agadim's Awakening, that's another way of getting back my creatures. Can... Uh, Maybe still start with the Unearth, and then if that gets countered with, let's say, a Mana Drain, at least they don't get as much mana out of it. Could also make the argument for Awakening first, because then I can still cycle the Unearth. But we might also end up with a 1 mana creature in the graveyard later to get value off Agadim's Awakening. Ah, that worked. So we'll go for Sorin. And then I can still attack with my... Fortress. A little bit short of transforming Sorin, but that's okay. And our opponent concedes, yeah, not being able to deploy Brea to mow down our creatures. And then we've got this recursion loop with Sorin eventually starting to pressure their life total with a minus ability as well. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tamio, so it could be a deck full of counter spells, but there's a lot of ways to build around Tamio. Either way, our hand seems reasonable, especially with Sentinel, Thoughtseize, Mox Amber, 
some of the better cards to have against a deck with a lot of counter spells potentially. And we'll immediately play Sentinel. And then next turn could go sort of into Amber into Thoughtseize. That seems okay. Tank for one. Could at some point also put a plus one counter on Sentinel with Light of Hope. And our opponent has a Witness Protection. That's a great answer to my commander. Although, again, we have answers to enchantments in hand with both Get Lost and Light of Hope. Junkwinder is going to be a while before they can play it. Same with Amir Enforcer. Tome of Legends represents more card draw. And Battlement can ramp. So I think we take Tome. Even though I could just take out Tamiya with a Get Lost next turn. Giving them extra tokens also discounts Junkwinder. So that's not necessarily a good thing. And then I can decide if I want a Light of Hope to transform Sorin, or if I have to use it on Witness Protection. Right, opponent will try and shut down Sorin. And Heartless Act the draw. So, let's see here. This still makes mana actually green and white now. That's interesting. So I could Light of Hope the Witness Protection... And then Heartless Act with Extort still only gains me two life, so not enough to transform my business person, which will turn back into Soren. Could also get Lost to Witness Protection, and then Light of Hope gaining life, and then take out Tamio. Yeah, I don't hate that idea. And then we still have Heartless Act for later. And so we'll Light of Hope, gain 4 life, extort, attack, transform Sorin. Could also just start plussing here, since Taimyo doesn't pressure my Sorin. But if they get more artifacts in play, that's going to be good for Mirror Enforcer and Junkwinder. So I think I would rather just deal with Taimyo. So yeah, Sentinel not being quite as effective as I hoped it would be, since our opponent's got a more creature-heavy build. But still don't hate my spot here. Can put Lurus in hand, and then keep up Heartless Act. Yeah, that seems fine. And then I'm not going to take out the Battlement, way to maybe take out a Junkwinder here. And then Lurus currently doesn't have anything to get back. Alright, there's the Winder. So whenever they make a token, they can lock something down. Volt Scourge to draw. Alright, so play Volt Scourge with Extort, and then we can still play Lurus, can start plussing Sorin some more, make some more food, and then if they ever run out of creature we can easily minus one. So we've got a lot of removal basically stored up into our commander, can also work up towards the minus six to just steal something, so we would have been in a pretty good position. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Nashi. And what do we think of our hand? Got some removal, life gain to transform Sorin. Way to get Sorin back so we don't have to pay the commander tax. Yeah, this seems fine. Turn one can play Volt Scourge. So what does Nashi do exactly? 4-4. Four, four. And then can make duplicates of a secret card. Alright, that's fine. So, get in for one. Could also play Arcane Signet instead of Sorin. In case they have a removal spell here. Although, I think Sorin's fine. Since we have the Unearth, we can cheaply get it back. 
And then perhaps next turn we can already turn it into a Planeswalker. Alright. So Arcane Signet into Revitalize is one way to do it. So I wouldn't be extorting. And start plussing. And now Planeswalker is going to be harder for the opponent to interact with. Rex in Arena is going to cost the opponent more life. And while I could extort, I think I prefer just putting a Lurus in hand for now. And then hit for one. Sorin up to seven loyalty. So next turn we could already minus six to steal something. I have plenty of ways to enable Revolt on Fatal Push as well. And now Invasion Milling is actually a good thing for Lurus. What to discard? Probably just a Flooded Strand. I can still play Lurus and get a 2-drop back. And then Amalia looks good over Archivist. Bodon doesn't seem to be searching a whole lot. So can uh, try that. Might be overextending into a board wipe a little bit. Daxos, I don't think is an amazing draw. Might want to find some discard spells instead. Now if they do wipe the board, we can still unearth back Lurus, and then Lurus helps get other stuff back. So that's kind of the plan. Sorin will keep plussing. Maybe next turn I can just sacrifice two or three food tokens, which will gain me nine life, and that represents nine damage with a minus one ability on Sorin. So that could also add up, especially if we're also attacking with more life linking creatures, because then we could be dealing even more damage. So yeah, the minus one here is quite deadly. If they try and play a large creature to stabilize, we can either remove it or just steal it with a minus six. So our opponent was kind of between a rock and a hard place. And as we mentioned, we still had a pretty good plan in the case of a board wipe. All right, so we got to see our Soren life gain deck in action, and I'm quite impressed by what the deck is capable of. It's pretty trivial to transform Soren, and then once we have the Planeswalker, the minus one ability is incredibly powerful, giving you basically recurring removal, as well as a way to start going face to quickly close out the game. So yeah, the Planeswalker kind of does it all, and then we didn't even get to see the minus six in action, but that can also be incredibly effective if the opponent's commander happens to be a creature, since we can just steal it and then there's no way for the opponent to easily get it back. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.